It's really taking a lot of the principles of Agile that I've told us, like, don't try to control everything. Just give people more freedom to collaborate together. Um, remove obstacles to their collaboration, work in short cycles. And, and the tools today, they're getting in the way. They're getting in the way again because everyone's got a different one and everyone's got a different process. So do you waste a ton of time trying to find the information you need? I'm sure you do. And what's more, as someone who is managing other people, seeing your team try and spend hours trying to find information is incredibly painful. So reality is, though, there's not a one-size-fits-all workflow management system. Whilst your UX and strategy team might like using Trello or Asana, when it comes to your developers, well, invariably, they're going to want to use Jira. So how do you manage this madness? Who, how do you decide who wins? Well, there was actually a McKinsey report that noted that actually most employees spend about eight hours a week just trying to find information. So the good news is there is a way to fix this problem. And that fix is a workflow management system. So if you're interested in saving yourself time, saving your team time and budget, keep listening to today's podcast when we're going to talk about creating and optimizing a workflow management system. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Ben Aston. I'm a digital project manager and founder of the digitalprojectmanager.com. We're on a mission to help digital project managers deliver better, to help people who manage projects in a digital world succeed. So if you want to get connected with our tribe, go to the digitalprojectmanager.com and you'll find there plenty of resources where you can get skilled, get confident and start delivering better projects. So today I'm joined by Mark Bosher and Mark is a web developer turned product guy and now he is the CEO and founder of Unito. And so Mark, welcome to the podcast today. Thanks for having me, Ben. So tell us a bit about this story. How do you go from being a, yeah, a web developer to a project manager to a product guy and then founding your own company? Tell, tell us a bit about that evolution. Well, it took some years, I guess, but I uh, started in the uh, dot-com uh, bubble and uh, things moving pretty fast. Um, been pulled in technology up to product and uh, I've been doing basically products f- you know, for 20 years. And... Um, when you're in product, you get this really cool thing where you observe problems all the time and you keep on saying someone should solve this, someone should solve this, and um, you never really get to it. But um, I kept the list and basically Unito came out of one of those problems that, that I observe over time. And so in terms of like, I mean, you say you've been working in product for 20 years as but Unito is like a relatively new product out there. So um, where did this kind of inspiration come from for developing specifically or tackling that, that problem? Well, product management and project management to an extent as well, you have to work with so many different teams and different groups and uh, different skill sets and you rarely have authority. You rarely have, you know, you're not their bosses. You have to manage by influence and, and that means you don't get to decide what tools they're going to use. And so you're often at the receiving end of whatever mix of tools each of the teams you have to work with have. And so kept on finding myself jumping around between, you know, the Zendesks, the Asanas, the Jiras and the GitHubs and, and all those tools and, and having to pay that price. And that's one of those moments where you go, someone should solve this. And, you know, typically you solve this by forcing everyone the same tool. And the idea as, you know, APIs evolved, it was, hey, can someone, can we connect those tools together? Can we leave people in their tool and not have PMs waste all this times, all this time running around just asking people if they're done and where they're at and then telling them, hey, this person's late, so this affects you here. Um, and, and that's really, that where the idea grew is a typical scratch your own itch and at some point, like, it was always in the plans to start something. You, you try it out and uh, jump off the cliff and if it hits some traction. And so we pursued it and here we are today. Awesome. And so, I mean, tell me a bit about your tool set that you integrate uh, with it internally. So, I mean, I know you need to can connect uh, project management tools and project management software like Trello and Asana and Asana and Jira. But uh, what's... What's your pick of tools that you tie together and how does that work? 
I mean, personally, I'm a tool junkie, so I've used pretty much all of them. And, um, and it's really exciting when you, you discover something that's kind of designed that fits with the way you think, you think and is adapted to your role. You gain so much in terms of productivity. Um, but often the, the real barrier is convincing the others to switch to that tool. Right? Um, I think a, a lot of the barrier to adoption technology these days is more about, it's less about technical, like installing the software or deploying it. It's much more about getting people on it. Um, so, you know, we have a dozen tools right now. We, we launched uh, ClickUp integration a couple of weeks ago. We're launching another one next week. And another one in three or four weeks or so. So we're cranking out tools that start in the project work management space. So the Asanas, the Rike, the Trellos. And um, we also started with developer tools. Um, so the GitHubs, the Bitbuckets, the GitLabs, and the Jiras. Really focusing on connecting PMs with technical teams or business users with technical teams that typically don't speak the same language and the same tool language for sure. Um, but we've added over the time uh, Zendesk, so support systems, HubSpot on the sales and the CRM side and the marketing side. So really, how do you how do you start looking at work not just as something within a team, not just a process in one team, but across your organization? And that that suddenly is a much larger and more important problem where there's a ton of time spent and wasted. Yeah, and so in terms of, I mean, you said you're a tools junkie. Are there any new tools? that you have discovered or found recently that have got you excited um, and uh, and that you think everyone else should know about? I mean, all the tools we integrate are the best tools of the market. Um, But, you know, we're, we like to think that there's no one best tool for anyone. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve, who you are and how the way you work. And, And really that's a core belief. I don't think, I don't recommend one over the other. It really depends and that's kind of the core thesis of the business is that everyone's got their tool, whatever makes them the most productive and, and super productive. And the challenge is that it's never the same. Right? So there's, there are tools coming out every day. We tend to pick the ones that are the most popular and up and coming um, and growing. Uh, of course, they need to have uh, an API layer as well so that they can be integrated. But most of the tools today have that that component, have that ecosystem view of the world. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, Mark has written a post which you can check out on the digitalprojectmanager.com. And it's called How to Build a Workflow Management System. And there's some examples in there. But for those who haven't read, can, can you kind of explain to us a bit more what you mean by workflow management? And um, I think, you know, as, as project managers, we... You know, we understand what process is, you know, it's, it's how we get something from A to B, a, a being the start of our project, B being the end of our project, and there are steps along the way. That's the process. Those are the steps we take to get a project out the door. And the idea is on that journey from A to B, we're delivering value, we're creating value um, as, we, as we kind of make that journey. So help us understand what is workflow management and where does it fit into that understanding of getting from A to B while working within the constraints that we have on a project um, and so that we can create value at the end of that journey? Yeah, I think it's very similar to what we're used to, to say in process and, and people use workflows and process often interchangeably. The way we like to think about it is um, process is a fairly linear step-by-step uh, sequence and and that's how we think naturally. And when we plan projects, we often will start with that. Like, first you have to do this, then you have to do this, and then you have to do that. And then reality kicks in, right? Where once people start working, you discover things, and you have to collaborate across a team, and someone else needs to be involved. And that very dynamic environment, especially today in of digital work, um, it's not as linear. It's not as super specific. And you have to give it's a lot less um, like predictable, if you want. So when we think of, of process, we like to think that there's a software development process, there's maybe a marketing campaign management process or a product launch or launch process um, or a sales process. And each of those teams have def- defined and there's, there's lots of framework for that. But once you start collaborating across those boundaries, um, there's a lot less. It's, it's more about meetings. It's more about Zoom calls now. It's more about chat um, and less about using the tools that allow us to manage that work and, and manage the execution delivery. So when we think of workflow management, we look at a, a layer that connects it all together. Ac- 
across all those processes and across the teams. That makes sense. Yeah. So if we, the, so the workflow management system takes into account uh, like the if this then that um, kind of scenario. Um, I mean, and I talked about process being from how you get from A to B on a project. But the reality is that journey is not a straight line at all. It's typically a series of loops and segues going from, from one way to, to the other. And so we need some way of, of managing the, these things happening. We know that when we, uh, you know, maybe we present the UX to the client, we're also developing the style tiles and what happens when the UX gets approved, but the style tiles don't get approved? How do we kind of loop? How do we keep the project moving forward and, and make sure the uh, right people are connected and updated at the same time so that, yeah, development can start, but maybe um, the, the design iterations can't, can't proceed yet? So having a more complex and nuanced understanding can actually help us be more efficient in the way that we actually deliver projects because we don't we no longer need to think of projects as this pure linear process but it's a series of small cycles that uh that gradually uh become integrated with one another as we've got these parallel work streams for ux design dev qa um these things can can begin to work and operate a bit more um seamlessly and and, and efficiently as we kind of uh, link them together a bit more tightly. Is that kind of the idea of the workflow management? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's really taking a lot of the principles of Agile that I've told us, like, don't try to control everything. Just give people more freedom to collaborate together. Um, remove obstacles to their collaboration, work in short cycles. And, and the tools today, they're getting in the way. They're getting in the way again because everyone's got a different one and everyone's got a different process. So the first step to workflow management is going where the work happens. is like accepting the fact that people are working in different places and going there. So integrating the tools where the work happens. And the second step is really mapping out the workflow across this. So kind of shaping the flow work. What are the rules or the guidelines that says, well, this is how marketing works with soft development or when there is a feature it, does, it needs to involve the designers and needs to involve the, the PMs and the developers this way, right? Without necessarily constraining them, but more like opening ways for them to collaborate from their tools without having to leave them. So without having to run around for status updates. So a very simple example would be you, you'd have your project plan in a Gantt chart in a tool like, you know, a Rike or an Asana or some kind of timeline. And you've got one of those activities that's that has to be done by the developers, well, that activity becomes automatically a JIRA issue. But it stays in sync with the JIRA issue. So that the PM, whatever happens as someone gets assigned to it or work starts, it gets allocated to a sprint and work starts happening on it and it progresses through the development cycle, the PM knows live what's happening, that progress in their tool. And they can see the dependencies with other departments or other teams or other activities without having to jump around wherever that work is happening. So start where recognizing where the work happens, connect it up together, and then kind of define the rules, which is whenever something happens in this project, I want to see it in my project plan, for example. Once you do that, then people don't have to leave their tools. All the information is accessible wherever you are, and suddenly it's much richer and there's less friction to collaboration. And that's when you can start optimizing and improving. And so, I mean, you talk about, um, yeah, kind of understanding that, different teams are going to want to work in different tools. And you know, I started with saying, hey, you know, it's, it's likely that your designers and UX team probably don't want to work in Jira. I mean, because Jira uh, can be very complex. And I think the, the beauty of something like Unito is that it yeah, enables people to uh, work in whatever tool works best for them. And I think it's an ongoing challenge with tool uh, rollouts trying to... Um, Everyone's constantly, I think, really on on the hunt for this kind of one uh, one tool to rule them all um, that does everything in the way that they want to. Um, but the reality is, each tool has a philosophy on yeah. on project management, on how projects should be managed and run. And 
uh, depending on that philosophy, it makes it hard or easy for different teams within the organization uh, to collaborate and work together in different ways. And, you know, I've had the experience of trying to um, get, get design teams to work in JIRA. And it's just a non-starter, really. Um, yeah. It's a particularly like, um, yeah, when you build a complex workflow into JIRA. Um, so in terms of uh, understanding then or kind of extracting that process and deciding how complex to make the workflow system, um, talk us through that kind of workflow design process. How do you, how do you say, okay, we we're going from A to B. We know that you know UX and design is happening. Um, dev needs to begin, um, but how do you begin to put in the checks and balances and automate things um, without making this thing overly complex? And I think one of one of my kind of pain points with Jira is that you design a you design a workflow. And then you get stuck, you know, you, you think, well, I want to move the card here. It doesn't need that step today or for whatever reason. So what I'm curious is when you're building a workflow management system and you're trying to automate some of these things so that, you know, when I create a card in uh, Trello, it automate, automatically creates that issue. Uh, but how do you, how complicated is too complicated and, and, uh, and where do you start? I think for us from, from day from the first day, the goal was for business users to be able to set it up, right? For non-technical people. And that's super key because you can't go see, if you want to connect two teams together, you can't require technical skills or wait for a developer to set up that integration, right? So it's all about visual design and, and being able to specify rules that from a, in English, if you want, or in a natural language that say, when when this happens, make sure it ends up with the you know in the engineering side. But it also is all about mapping things where and it's one process may be much more detailed than the other. So you know in software development, you might have steps where you know you have QA and you have peer review and it's going through staging and there's all these individual steps that you might want to track in your software development process if that team is organized that way. But if you're looking at it from a from a marketing perspective and you just want to know when the feature is ready to, to, to launch and how close is it to that, you don't care about the level of granularity. So a workflow management system has to be able to say, well, in marketing, here's my process. Here's my workflow or the steps. How do those map or, or map to those of engineering? And they don't have to be one-to-one, right? These like 10 detailed steps of engineering could just be it's under development for the marketing team. And it starts with a conversation of like, how do you work? How do we work? And how do we bring those together? But it's mostly then after giving the flexibility for the business users for, to set up that, that relationship and iterate over it. Right? You don't have to figure it all in one shot. You can start with some very simple rules. Whenever I assign it to Ben, it should show up in his tool. And, or whenever I escalate a ticket to engineering from a support system, it should show up in, in this project in, in JIRA or whatnot, right? There's very simple things you can start. And once you see that information flowing and see how people are doing it, then you can start really getting to the next level and next level um, of sophistication and time-saving if you want, right? I mean, and I can see that a what looks like a workflow behind you of some description. So, <laughs> so like in, in terms of this, um, that conversation where you map out your process. Um, it, I mean, it looks like a process map behind you. That's actually a kind of a fun, that's a relic from the past. It's a customer journey mapped on a wall with like post-its and stuff and this doesn't exist anymore right it's like wallpaper now because we're all remote (laughs) but but in terms of like facilitating that conversation where where you're trying to bring together these different teams who are working in different tools trying to understand who needs what when and in what format i mean it's kind of like developing a communications plan uh when we're thinking about okay what do i need to tell you uh in what format when um so and um, with what frequency it's kind of thinking through that kind of conversation but as you're kind of building that out and facilitating that conversation how do you do you, do you just design that straight into the tool or yeah. do you do you try and like whiteboard things out first and um and try and get this big picture understanding of what's going on 
Well, what we saw customers doing is they would they would draw it out, they would whiteboard it. Um, so we actually built that function right into the tool. So you can visually map out where does the work happen and then draw out the, the flow of work. Take, basically shape that flow, right? And, and shape how work should go from one team to another. And that discussion that you're describing, I think that's that's super key. We, we've found that customers, they, they're very good at their process in their team, right? They, they figured that out and there's a ton of documentation out there for this stuff. But once, once we talked to them about collaborating across the boundaries of their team that's when they know nothing about what other how other people are working and pms know this firsthand because really they're living at the boundaries right they they're crossing those boundaries all the time but instead of of pms spending their time translating and making that bridge and copying and pasting and repeating what if the tools could just stop being an obstacle and the communication could flow directly and pms could really be do what they're really great at uh, and it's just aligning people, keeping track of things, of risks and de-risking things and setting priorities without the, the just grunt work of keeping up everyone informed. That's not where the value is. Right? And that's what we're spending our time on, fortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I think so much of so much of project management time can be um, making sure people know things that they should that they should know, they should uh, know. Make, making sure that people have read the ticket that landed in their box or that they'd seen that something had been updated in trello and i think acknowledging the fact that everybody was going to work differently and accommodating for that by saying well okay if you want it in trello let's get it in trello if you want um if you want this as a jira issue then let's let's make that happen so i think um Enabling and, and empowering people to work the way that suits them best um, is 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 really the future. But let's talk about when it when it fails. Like, what are the challenges of this system? Because in my mind, what the the challenges is when you think the workflow is becomes you know the solution to all your problems because you agreed it and. Um, you know, we end up then with lots of things happening in, in lots of different places, uh, but, you know, things still falling in between the cracks. So I, I'm guessing the challenge is uh, a kind of blind reliance on the tool. But, um, but yeah, what challenges have you seen um, with, a, with a workflow management system? I mean, communication is always key, right? And but that whether you have a system to help you integrate your teams or not, that doesn't change. Um, we found like once you remove, like you make communication easier because then they can people can use their tools that are using every day to work to communicate and collaborate and update people that are not in their tool. Um, that just becomes easier. Like that communication requirement just becomes easier. Um, Think about it as a as an orchestra, right? You've got multiple musicians. They each have their own, you know, instrument or tool. The the violins are in Trello, and and the uh, the piano is in, is in Jira or whatnot, right? And there's someone, there's some conductor, um, typically the PM, trying to keep them all, you know, in sync and orchestrated. But you're not going to force them to all switch to violins. Right, like that's their strength. The fact that they each have their own thing, and as an as a conductor, you're not also trying to keep them perfect. Like you've got your you've got limited tools, right? You've got your baton, and you're just trying to guide them through this process. But they're each independent, and they each have to get there on their own, and they each have their way to play the instrument together. So I think you know modern digital project management is very close to this, and you're you're conducting. Right, and, and you're just guiding this group that is all autonomous and have all learned to play their instrument their way and learned to really um, perform uh, with that instrument. And it's more like bringing them all together and keeping them in, in harmony. And the first thing is just, can they all see the conductor and can they all see each other? <laughs> and today, everybody's in their little box. And in this remote world, it's even worse, right? It's like suddenly the orchestra split out across the world and there's lag and there's like, you know, there's, there's time differences in time zones and made it so much harder to stay in harmony. So the, you can imagine that workflow management solution as that, as orchestrating all of those people, um, without having to change the way they work. 
across the time zones, across their tools. Yeah. And so how do you see, how do you see this evolving? Um, kind of like when you look at the future of work, the future of projects, um, the, the future of Unito, your tool, um, like how do you see this um, evolving and how do you see the role of the project manager changing in that? Well, hopefully they spend less time with just grunt work and more time conducting, right? And I think like, we have a thesis that this trend towards more and more tools is just going to continue because it's just so cheap to build software and so easy to distribute it and for people to adopt it um, that it's just going to continue. So we believe that you have to go where, the, where people work, where the work is, and embrace this reality instead of fighting it. Right? And once you've uh, let people and teams self-organize, you still have to align them and keep in sync. And I think once you've got a workflow management layer that, that connects that, that glue, suddenly you have a lot more visibility into what's happening. And I think that's the... Like, you, you started the, the introduction saying that fight, who wins, right? Who wins? And like that implies that someone has to lose. Like someone has to jump on the other tool. And I mean, we believe in a, in a future where people don't necessarily have to lose and, and the tools all kind of work seamlessly together. And we hope to be that platform or we believe that workflow management is the platform that was going to enable this. Right. Awesome. So if I'm new to thinking about, you know, process at all um, and workflow management at all, because um, I know there's lots of agencies, studios out there. They're a five to ten person shop. They're just hustling to get stuff out the door. The CEO's the business developer. He's also the project manager. Um, in that kind of super fast, loose, uh, wild west of digital world, um, where do you start with, with, I guess, process design and then workflow optimization? What For someone who's thinking, man, I don't even know, I, don't, do, I didn't even realize we kind of had a process. We just like do the work. Um, talk us through um, just what your first steps are in kind of understanding and designing uh, optimal process. How do you how do you get to that point where you can even begin <laughs> to automate things? Because I think there's there's some some work that has to happen before uh, we kind of get to that point of making you know keeping everyone on the same getting everyone on the same page, keeping them on the same page. Um, how do we? What's that first step to kind of process design? Um, there's always low hanging fruit, and the bar the barrier to entry is much lower than than we expect. It, it's not that that complex. As you describe some agencies and studios, every customer they have, have their own way to get organized. And often, this, the, especially when it's a smaller agency, they have to adapt to whatever the customer has. And that means that you have a ton of time to relearn whatever tool the customer is imposing on you. You have to adapt to their process. So next time a project shows up, start with one project. And what's that customer using? And what's your ideal tool where... If you could use that same tool, then you can start, you know, repeat it, having a re- process internally. If you could only just stick to one to one tool for delivering your agency's projects. Next time you have a customer with a different tool, try one of the workflows, like try integration, right? Take that approach. What if you could peer those two tools together? It's so much less disruptive and it, there's a very low barrier to entry to try these things, right? Um, it's not that you could try one project and that's kind of the beauty about look going where the work happens is you don't it's not a rip and replace it's not doesn't take a lot of upfront work you can do it with one small team in your company you could do it with one project you can do it with one uh, one kind of workflow which could be how do we uh, get marketing to make requests to change from engineering on the website just that one how much time are you spending on it or support escalating a ticket to engineering start with that you know that where you're spending your time and and you can just iterate from there yeah yeah i think that that more agile mindset of build tests and and learn is so important when we're thinking about designing and optimizing process like the reality is is we won't get it right first time but finding low-hanging fruit finding opportunities 
uh, to build process where it doesn't exist. And, uh, and a great way to do that is by looking at lessons learned from your, from your last project. Where did it go wrong? Where, where did things fall apart? Why, why was it that design uh, started two weeks later than it should? Why was it that um, development started too early? Um, beginning to identify from those lessons learned, uh, that can be a great place to begin to d- design some process. And then we build we build the process, we map it out, we test it, and then we iterate on it. We learn what works, what, what doesn't work. So that can be a great first step uh, to uh, designing, optimizing our process. But Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been great having you with us. Thank you, Ben. And if you want to learn more and get ahead in your project management process design, head to the digitalprojectmanager.com uh, where you can find a whole ton of great resources that we have for you. You'll find our membership there, our online training. But until next time, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.